Hello everyone, today's video we're going to be taking a look at wind shear, a very very interesting atmospheric phenomena that is responsible for some pretty high level crashes, especially uh, before it was uh, codified and um, techniques were developed in order to go ahead and detect it in advance. So uh, what is wind shear? Uh, the short version of wind shear is that you have a situation where the wind directions uh, change very, very, very rapidly. Now, when you have wind shear, you could run into a situation where the wind up to, say, this altitude is coming out of the west, but once you get above that altitude, you have wind coming out of the north. This is an example that would be a 90 degree wind shear. The big thing with wind shear is that rapid change of direction can cause some very, very, very severe control problems. You know, if we're expecting a headwind and suddenly have a tailwind, we could end up in a really serious accident situation. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create some wind shear and kind of show you what we're looking for. So right now we have an AGL of about, you know, let's call that about 10 feet, which knowing this airport, this is Elizabeth Airport, by the way, this is the field, it's in uh, Southern Connecticut, pretty fun to take off and land from, as you're going to see in a second. So let's go ahead and create some. So I'm going to grab my little Amin, and you can see that I got my little kind of wind layer right here. We'll come down here, we'll say that at the ground, we're going to define the wind as coming basically right as a headwind here. So two nine or five looks pretty good to me. We'll call it 300, and we'll go ahead and set the wind speed to, well, I don't know, let's call it 10 knots, which is pretty typical here. Uh, gusting right now, we're going to leave the gust alone. We'll put that to zero. So basically, we have wind 300 at 10 knots, and uh, we don't have any you know, sketchy gusts or anything like that. This is just a straight-up headwind. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a new wind layer. Let's grab this wind layer, and uh, let's bring it down to, uh, let's make it pretty low. Let's make it about 300 feet here. Let's go ahead and spin that around the opposite direction. We'll do pure wind shear here. Oh, 130 sounds incredibly sketchy. Uh, speed looks pretty good. Variable looks pretty good. I don't know why it's saying variable here, but I'm not going to worry about it too, too much. I can spin that around without having too many issues. Perfect. So now we have a wind layer that's at our heads. It's basically blasting us in the face right now, which we should show some airspeed for, which we do. And then we have another uh, layer of wind, which is just a little tiny bit above us. It's about 336 feet up. So what we're going to see here is we're going to take off. Everything's going to go pretty smooth smoothly as normal, but what's going to happen is as we get a little bit higher is you're going to notice a drastic change in position of the aircraft. So let's go ahead and give this thing a full rum rum rums and I'll rip down the runway. Now, most of the accidents caused by wind shear are almost universally going to be in situations during takeoff and landing. Uh, there's actually a couple examples where we have extreme wind shear, which we'll call a microburst. It's a very entertaining thing. Notice, by the way, the sock. All right, looks pretty good. Go ahead and give us a little gentle tug. And I remember the first time I landed at this runway in the real world, and I was blown away by, you know, just the, the smell of the atmosphere. Because, again, you're right here on the water, so you tend to get all that nice salt and stuff right in your face. All right, take a look at the waves. Which way are the waves going? And that would be your first clue that something could be going weird here. All right, let's go lift that nose up just a little bit more. And we'll go ahead and uh, set ourselves up for a nice little pattern here. So we're getting bounced around. Uh, this is pretty typical for most uh, days when you're going to be traveling around. And we're just starting to hit that other wind layer. And now notice my wind direction is now completely behind me. So let's go ahead and turn the plane around and I'll bring ourselves over to a traffic pattern here. Nice little left turn. Again, nothing extreme. Normally, we'd wait a little bit higher before taking this turn. Uh, one of the things that was impressed upon me in my early days of flight training is the fact planes break when you do things. <laughs> as silly as that sounds, um, you're not really going to have issues with the stability and structural integrity of your plane if you're not doing anything with it. You know, if you're just kind of cruising around, you know, the probability by doing some real damage is actually relatively low. Because again, these aircraft are built for quite a bit of nastiness. And we're going to see some right now. All right, so we have a pure headwind right now. That should trouble us. So in the real world, what you do is if you take a look at that sock, Notice the sock is indicating a pure headwind here. So that would be our first clue that something is not right. But remember that sock is uh, you know, not always pointing in the same direction. So let's say we looked out our head. Remember when we first started it, the sock was pointing right at us and now the sock is pointing way away from us. So let's say we, uh, we missed that little detail there. You know, we're kind of cruising here. We look at our little indicator, of course, notice the direction the indicator tells us that the wind is going. And let's go ahead and spin ourselves around and see what happens here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my plane all kind of queued up. Remember, this is going to be very, very, very weak wind shear. This is not extreme wind shear. We'll show you exactly how bad it can get. Go ahead and bring those flaps down. We'll make this a nice short approach today because then why not? We'll save a little bit of time. Go ahead and zoom in. There's a big old three zero. Looking good. Checking that sock again. And we can see that the sock is still pointing away from us. So we should have already known something was up immediately. Again, because especially since the wind was the wrong direction. But this is for the purposes of demonstration. So um, we'll call this one for science. No one loves science more than I do. It's scientifically impossible. All right, I'm actually going to have to probably do a donut here in order to make this one work. And let's go cheat just a teeny tiny bit here. Whoop! I love cheating sometimes. All right, come a little to the right. Give ourselves a little bit of a forward slip here. Now 
looks pretty good right there. And we're passing underneath the wind shear level. So all of a sudden, you probably observe that the speed of the air, whoa, the speed of the air, oh my gosh, I had a pretty substantial difference there. I'm actually going to try to land the back tires here. And we also noticed that the direction of the plane was constantly shifting. Good, put that right tire down. We'll go ahead and hold the brake. Now notice in flight sim, but the windsock is now showing that it's facing us. Uh, that's just kind of one of those uh, little, I'm going to call them kind of flight cynisms. So that was sketchy. But the big thing that let us know that something was wrong was the fact that the wind, the airspeed on the aircraft, regardless of my slip there, decreased and then increased, which is a universal sign for the hail wind becoming a headwind. Now let's reset everything and make this a little bit more dangerous. All right, let's make it tricky. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing, in, but we're going to make one major change here. So let's grab my wind layer. We'll go ahead and make it a headwind here. 300, we'll make it speed, uh, we'll make it a little more interesting today. We'll go right up to 20 knots here. Uh, the way that Flight Sim calculates wind speed is it's almost like half. So we have a 2-1, gusting 2-1. So uh, let's have a little bit of fun here. <laughs> I'm going to die. So let's go ahead and uh, make our wind speed here. Uh, we'll make it We'll make it pretty substantial. We're not going to go epic here, but that should be more than enough to scare us pretty good here. Actually, we need to uh, adjust the angle just a teeny tiny bit so that it's a true 180 degree wind shear. So we have a wind speed of 20 knots, which is basically gusting 11. Now, this little piece of information doesn't tell us a lot other than it's a pretty strong headwind. So it's like, oh, no problem. I don't have to worry about that at all. However, we have the potential of having a 10, 180 degree wind shift which means our wind speed is going to be changing up to 30 all the way down to potentially 10. So that's going to be kind of an interesting little scenario. So let's go ahead now. We're looking at the sock here. We're just being normal pilots. Uh, we see that sock is pretty straight, which means uh, I expect to be kind of a tricky landing here. A little bit of left foot. Things are going pretty smoothly. Our uh, takeoff speed, engine's accelerating. I'm really having to stomp on the left foot here, which means I'm going to go ahead and give it a little bit of right aileron. We go ahead and take off kind of conventionally. Whoa. Oh, hello. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Oh, 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 oh boy. I'm, oh my gosh. Okay. Easy, 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 e, e. Oh my gosh. Got to concentrate here. Oh boy. Okay. Okay. I'm legitimately not moving the controls. That is literally the controls moving themselves. Okay. That was incredibly dangerous. Now let's take a look at the window at the water again here. Uh, what we see is we see a bunch of white caps, which means that we've got some pretty serious wind speed. And the other thing we probably observe is the channel direction of it is still facing towards where we are. Um, so again, we'll go ahead and spin around. We'll set ourselves up for landing. Now, one of the things we can do uh, when we do encounter wind shear is I highly recommend picking another day to fly, or the safest thing to do is probably wait it out. Uh, wind shear is so incredibly dangerous that, you know, it breaks giant airliners. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set up a landing. Uh, let's say we're in a situation where we have to land in wind shear. You know, we don't have a choice. You know, maybe we've got a situation where we're out of fuel. Maybe it's a general emergency or something. And we don't have any way. We're just going to have to make it work. What are we going to do? Well, the first thing we have to do is we have to keep the plane controllable. I know that sounds weird, but in order to be able to make quick adjustments for our flight, we're going to have to keep our speed up to make our controls crisp. The next thing we're going to have to do, which is a little untypical here, is we're not going to use full flaps. Um, we're actually going to use reduced flaps. Uh, one of the only times the FAA says, hey, you can use less than on your normal flaps, because they recommend full flaps for everything, by the way, is whenever you're in a situation where the conditions warrant, I think is the technical term they recommend there. So what I'm going to do is I'm only going to use two thirds of maximum flap here. The other thing we have to do is we have to keep our speed up. If we know that the gusting is going to be about 10 knots, of course it's in both direction 10 knots, that means at any point my 70 knots could suddenly become 60 knots, which means whatever approach speed I typically approach at, which is usually 60 for this plane, means it's going to have to be a little bit faster. Uh, the general rule of thumb there is to add half the gust component. So in this case that would be about 65 knots would become my new approach speed. We can actually come in a little tiny bit faster than that if we need to. Now as I'm Pulling myself to face this runway, notice how my plane is slowing down to Piper Cup speeds here. Like, I am not, there's no time acceleration, there's no time deceleration here. This is just giving you an idea of how incredibly slow this plane has just gotten. Uh, whenever you have winds this strong ever, it's really important that you keep your speed up in order to protect your aircraft. Again, the wind suddenly stopped, what speed are you going to be going? And are you going to be able to catch it? The other thing to remember in the real world is because of friction with the ground, the wind direction and speed will change the closer you get. So right now you can see I'm doing about 68, 69 knots. That, that's about a pretty good approach speed for this scenario. But keep in mind, as you get lower, that number will just progressively get less or it'll shift the direction, in which case all of a sudden we got a tailwind. Let's go take a peek at our sock buddy there. Our sock buddy, uh, can, uh, it's right there on the right. So now it looks like it's uh, definitely coming from the right a little bit here. 
down. Looks like we have a bit of crosswind. We go ahead and left, right, or right aileron down. And now again, keep that speed up. Normally we'd be coming in about 60. We'll come in a little faster this time. You've got to maintain positive control of the airplane, and you can't do it if your controls are not responsive. Okay, getting a little slow. A little, see, see the speed decrease? See it? I did not touch my throttle and I lost 10 knots. All right, here we go. So when we do this, we have to try our best to go ahead and try to keep it as well coordinated as we can. But we want them again, careful, careful. I'm gonna go ahead and plant the right aileron down, right wing down. Go ahead and make him positive control. Whoop, easy on the brakes, easy on the brakes. All right, we're down. Now what happens if we have extreme wind shear? Oh yeah, now we're talking. Ho oh. ho. So our other examples of wind shear were in a scenario when the wind was coming directly at and directly away from us, which we essentially could treat as a normal gust. This wind shear is just a little different this time because instead of dealing with just something that's coming right at us, we're now dealing with wind shear that is working at a 90 degree angle to our direction of travel. So I'm not touching any controls right now. I'm completely hands off. And you can see how the aircraft is being whipped left and right. I'm, I, I, I don't think I could make up that lack of control that much. So now we're going to be using the exact same philosophy here. Remember that wind is going to shift and it's going to continue. I got to be quick with your feet here. It will continually shift. The important thing here is if we can land somewhere else, that would be the preferred maneuver. Um, if we attempt to do a regular landing, which we'll attempt in a minute, there's a very, very good probability that we're probably going to drag a tire halfway across the runway here. But we're going to go ahead and do the best we can with what we have. Keep your hand right on the throttle. Keep your speed up, because remember, at any point, that wind could shift again, causing a situation where you can't control the plane. And again, just let it kind of do its thing. If you try to fight it, it will cancel out as you're fighting it. Let's go ahead and switch to a landing position here. Again, keeping my power up. At any point, if things don't look good, we can always go around. So we're going to try to go ahead and come in flat. Again, we're using less than full flaps here. Keep an eye on your speed. Again, speed up. Easy, 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 easy. Put that right aileron down. Let's go ahead and ground it. And you can see that the plane was almost flipped. So the big thing for wind shear is remember, you've got to keep your speed up. Second of all, if you can avoid it, avoid it. Enjoy.